welcome to Green Sky Hill Indian United Methodist Church on this third Sunday of Advent. I'm so happy that you're here to worship with us this morning, and I'm happy to be able to support Pastor Jonathan in his week of study as we continue our series, The Inn, Housing the Holy. This morning we are going to be talking about opening the door on this Sunday of joy. As John baptized new converts, he invited them to live with changed hearts and lives. When asked how to do that, his answers all point to making sure that no one is cheated or left without the basic necessities of life, including the right not to be harassed. A life full of joy, which the prophet Isaiah described as an ever-flowing spring, is the birthright of all the children of God. May we act to make it so. Today we offer the light of joy to illumine the door of welcome. May this light shine in our hearts, in our lives, and in our church. May joy awaken us to possibilities and lead us to greater hospitality. There is room in this inn, a house for the holy. The joy of Christ be with you. As we rise in body or spirit for our opening hymn, I invite you to reach out to your brothers and sisters in Christ and pass the peace with a wave in the comment section and a good morning. Good morning. 
Today is our third week in the season of Advent. We remember that Advent is a season when we prepare our hearts and our minds for the coming of Jesus. And one way that we can prepare is by making room in our lives for what matters most. Let's continue with our call and response that we've been working on for the past couple of weeks. And if any of our friends are new here this week and joining us for the first time, we're so happy that you're here with us. We're going to go ahead and do a response time where we're going to be using some American Sign Language. It's pretty easy and I'm sure you'll catch on rather quickly. Make room for family. Make room for friends. We make room for Jesus. Make way for love that never ends. We make room for Jesus. Make room for others who need a hand. We make room for Jesus. Make room to listen, to understand. We make room for Jesus. On the first Sunday of Advent, we explored hope. When we have hope, we can see a world of possibilities. On the second Sunday of Advent, we sat at the table of peace, a table where everyone has a place. Well, today is our third Sunday of Advent, and today is all about joy. That feeling of well-being deep inside of us. Joy is different than happiness. Happiness is when we smile with our faces, and joy is when we smile with our hearts. It's hard to think about joy at this time of year without thinking about the musical moments that cause and express feelings of joy in our hearts. So this morning, we are going to express joy with our heartbeat through our drum beat, the drum of joy. So I brought my drum with me this morning, and if you don't have a drum close by, you can use your hands as percussion. You could clap, you could snap, you could make a fist and do a pound on a table, or maybe a flat open hand and you could pound on your leg. But any noise that you can make that's like a drum beat or a heartbeat, you could even take your hand and make a beat on your chest like your heart this morning. Well, let's play some Christmas rhythms together to get started. How about, let's imagine that we are the clip-clapping hooves of the donkey that's carrying Mary into the town of Bethlehem. So let's think, how could that sound? Clip-clap. Does that sound like a clip-clap to you? Maybe it's a little bit slower because the donkey's getting tired. Now let's imagine how frightened those shepherds must have been when the angels appeared. That must have been so shocking to them. I bet you that you could hear their heartbeats right through their chest. But when they heard the good news of the birth of Jesus, the shepherds were overcome with joy and ran to Bethlehem. Now let's imagine the joy that we feel when we realize that God has given us enough and that when we all share what we have, we can do more than feel joy. We can spread joy too. Let's all play a joyful rhythm. Any joyful noise that you can come up with. Are you ready? Let's go. the song that we've been singing the past couple of weeks. We've been changing the lyrics a little bit and singing to the tune of the first Noel. Well this morning let's sing to our drum beat and let's make room for joy. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. 
Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known to all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This morning's message comes from Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. Then John said to the crowds who came to be baptized by him, You children of snakes, who warned you to escape from the angry judgment that is coming soon? Produce fruit that shows you have changed your hearts and lives, and don't even think about saying to yourselves, Abraham is our father. I tell you that God is able to raise up Abraham's children from these stones. The axe is already at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and tossed into the fire. The crowds asked him, What then should we do? He answered, Whoever has two shirts must share with the one who has none, and whoever has food must do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. They said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He replied, Collect no more than you are authorized to collect. Soldiers asked, What about us? What should we do? He answered, Don't cheat or harass anyone, and be satisfied with your pay. The people were filled with expectation, and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ. John replied to them all, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than me is coming. I'm not worthy to loosen the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husk is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and begin and bring the wheat into his barn. But he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. With many other words, John appealed to them, proclaiming good news to the people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning, we will talk about joy and how much is enough. We've all heard the song, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Yes, where? Down in my heart. The lyrics of this simplistic childhood chant is a pure representation of what joy truly is. And as we discussed with the children this morning, joy goes deeper than just being happy. Joy is what is promised in salvation with the coming of our King. And in order to make room in our hearts, we must first balance our resources and stop holding on to more than what we are supposed to take. In our passage this morning, John baptized new converts and he's very specific about how to change their hearts and lives. He says, don't take more than you are supposed to. Don't cheat and harass people. Be satisfied with what you have. It sounds pretty simple and straightforward, but in our society today, is it that easy? In a world where enough is never enough, Success is always just a step away, and happiness is measured by quantity. Quantity of money, square footage, friends and followers. But this is not a sustainable way to live. And this ideal of joy only being found in excess is not the joy that is promised to us. Last week, we talked about the table of peace. There should be room for everyone and enough food for all of us. But if we're so busy piling up our own plate, it makes it hard to see that the person's plate across the table from us is empty. And some of us may even try to protect ourselves by sitting at our own table, surrounded by our loved ones, so that we know that everyone in our circle at our table is provided for. But if we keep our blinders on and our vision small, then we only have to worry about those closest to us but if we all sat at the same table and we learn to only take what we need and leave room for more, then everyone gets a serving and everyone is satisfied. But if you take more than what you need, you're taking somebody else's serving. It is our duty to stop thinking of only ourselves and chasing happiness by obtaining more, but rather opening the door to share our resources and give in abundance to those with nothing. In our society today, there are people and even groups that have the mentality that just because someone is in need, they must be lazy or they're just undeserving. 
or it's their own problem to figure out. Not only is this unloving, but this mentality will never allow for room for joy in your life. This time of year is the most popular time for donations and giving to those less fortunate. According to USA Today, about one third of all charitable giving takes place in the last three months of the year, with about 18% of that giving taking place in December alone. But giving should not be a once a year self-righteous pat on the back. It should be a way of life, stripping back the excess and simplifying to truly make room for the promised joy. Because joy is not about being happy, but a deep well-being and trust that God will see us through. So as we continue our waiting this Advent season and we journey through Advent, making room in our hearts, let us ask ourselves, how much is enough? Let us pray. In this moment, we open the doors of our hearts to honesty before God about what we've done and left undone that has created less joy in a hurting world. Let us breathe out this regret. And breathe in the life-giving, forgiving spirit of God. And out again with the peace of Christ. In this moment, we open the doors of our lives to the call of the Spirit, inviting us to become more than we can ask or imagine. Let us breathe out our fear and breathe in the courage of the Spirit of God. And out again with the peace of Christ. In this moment, we open the doors of this church, filling it with the compassion of Christ for all those who are struggling. We remember and pray for those who are suffering economic hardship and insecurity and basic needs. May abundance be shared. For those who are suffering mentally, finding it difficult to cope, may paths open and hope return. For those who are suffering illness or injury, may healing abound. For those who are suffering loneliness and isolation, may companionship and solace arrive. For those who are suffering discrimination, fear, and violence, may they know respect, respite, and safety. May the advent of compassion be born in us, reside within us, move outward from us to meet the needs of the world, making a house for the holy, that is each and every child of God. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. The Lord's Prayer. Nusnan, spimming aion, manutak chitoin gadeg dishnikazwi, dugmau in the bit gushnum gadenand mundashuavat amak king, to be school with the spimming. Me shanan sununga gish kaka gemi jang gye aboen mishnan wem bataj shwebzut ninanen es aboen matwa egewe meju dog eje gege unishish kanke magwat ben dog suning nimbugam wishnang dash unje ama emjai iwish kin mag de bandan Ogama oin, gekske elzoen, gepsigen dagosoen, gagnik upon a gagnik. Amen. This is my creative spirit in the world. This is my offering. May you see the things you do, no matter how small or mundane, as the way that you contribute goodness to the world, creating more life, more joy, more love. Praise be to God, the creator of all that is.
God's door of welcome swing open in your heart and in your life. May Christ's humble first dwelling remind you of the plenty you already know. And may the Spirit lead you into more possibility and hospitality than you can imagine, making room in the inn for all. May it be so for you. May it be so for us. May it be so for this church. Amen.